I remember the day I I saw that applications were open. I was just in shock, <laughs> and I was just like paralyzed with with fear. And I was already thinking, like, okay, I'm not gonna get, it. I'm not gonna get it. But I've just I've learned to practice. You know, not listening to that voice too much. So I did a lot of video journals like throughout my journey up until getting the internship. Awesome. Happy New Year, everyone. I'm here with uh, Justine and welcome back. Hopefully uh, you've had a good break if you got the chance to. It's 2022 and I know we're all trying our best to be optimistic and I know things can be rough depending on where in the world you are, but keep going at it. Things will get better. And with that, I'd like to introduce Justine. Would you like to start off by giving a bit of an introduction? Hi, everyone. I'm Justine. I am a product designer, I'd like to say now. I am also a business student in my third year studying at Wilfrid Laurie University in Waterloo. Thankfully, my school also has a, the option to minor in UX, so I also have a minor in user experience. I really just fell in love with the idea of building products and building tech and building features instead of selling them because I was previously down going down the path of marketing. Since then, I've just been working really hard on getting more experience in the field. I recently started a club at my school about UX. It's called UX Laurier quick plug and we're just a club dedicated to creating a community and a space for those interested in UX design and in that field to really pursue their interests and learn more about it outside of career related stuff. I also like bullet journaling. I'm also just a regular journaler, just not of the bullet journal kind. I'm an introvert. I like watching movies and K-dramas. But yeah, that's just a little bit about me. (laughs) <laughs> that was a great introduction. Thanks for that. And I think you're doing a lot of great things that you mentioned about. I think you also have an Instagram for your bullet journal, right? That's pretty yeah. cool. So I'll make sure to link those in below the video here. Uh, so I know like Justine also mentioned like you Laurie, which is like a great group to join. Justine, like with you starting off in your journey and when it came to applying to internships, what were some of the, the challenges that you faced when you were applying for jobs? Yeah, I think one of the biggest challenges is mental health and this just constant feeling of being not enough. It's just constant comparison, especially within UX and when you're working on your portfolios and just that just feeds that thought of you're not enough. So when you're in this job recruiting mindset, it really is such a vicious cycle, especially the portfolio thing. And so the ways I've tried to combat that as for me, this is a personal thing for me, but I'm a really big journaling advocate and just writing down my thoughts and just ranting to myself on paper. I think it slows down the pace of your thoughts a lot because you are you can't write as fast as you can talk or as you can think. But even after a week or after a day when I'm like not feeling as like bad as I was when I was writing stuff and I look mm-hmm. back at it, I realize how mean I really am to myself because those are like my most raw thoughts. And so having that as like a snapshot of what I was thinking during this time. So that is one way I've been able to combat like burnout and negative self-talk and imposter syndrome. Another way is creating a hype doc for myself, which I know is pretty common. I love that. In the community. I do it on Notion because I am a Notion fanatic and it's just a record of compliments that I get or good feedback that I get about my work or about who I am or what I've done. And another thing about like imposter syndrome is it's all in your head and mm-hmm. you're just making up uh, narratives and assumptions about what people think of you or what role you play in like a team or an organization or in a group. And the way I've combated it is just asking people what they think of me really flat out. These are so good. And I I feel like there's so many things here that I want to dig into a little bit more. Maybe at some point, if you're comfortable sharing, I'd love to see like how you're, how you set up like your notion, probably share that here. So whoever wants to do that, having a hype doc is probably something you can do at any stage in your career. And it's Mm -hmm. something you're going to need when you want to grow and, and then find out where your gaps are. And it's a great way to reflect. And I felt like that was like a theme that you had throughout whatever you shared. Like you reflect through your journal. I've heard that works for a lot of folks. And also with having a hype doc is a great way to go back and reflect. And I think the third thing you mentioned was getting feedback. 
specifically asking people what, what they think of the way you're working, for example. And I'm curious to know, like, you're also an introvert and so am I. How do you actually approach uh, someone to ask them for feedback? And what do you ask for? Do you ask for a specific feedback question? Yeah, I've done it different ways. It's much easier in you know the virtual world because it's just mm-hmm. like a Slack message now instead of yeah. having to go up to someone and like actually ask. But I remember for like my past internship at Shopify, I would remember that like after a certain presentation I did, or if I had, if I worked with someone pretty closely, either one, I would have a feedback form. If it was like a presentation mainly, if it was a presentation, I'd have uh, attach a feedback form in the description or in that Slack message just for them to give me like anonymous feedback. And it was a bit more structured. So it was easy for them to give feedback. They didn't have to type out a whole message, but for more relationships wise and like how I was working with specific people, I would just craft a message that was like, oh, hey, name, it has been really nice working with you so far and I'm really enjoying it. I was wondering if there's any way that I can work with you better or if there's any kind of feedback that you have about the way I'm working or or things like that. It's really straight out. I just had to like throw myself there. Yeah. Even though it was like awkward for me to do, I just didn't just click the send button. Yeah, that's amazing. This is such a great way to actually like self-solicit your own feedback. And you don't have to wait for these uh, specific milestones when you're working in a job, when you you have these 360s or any sort of like review with your lead. This is such a great way to tease out those things that you want to work on earlier. We talked about some of the challenges you had with applying. What were some things that you did to show that you had experience? Because I feel like this is something that can be challenging for interns, like when you're first applying Mm -hmm. for internships, or even if you're just applying for like a junior role, for example. No, that's a a good question. I learn best through doing. And so I really try to accumulate as much experience as possible. And that wasn't necessarily work experience. It was passion projects. It was hackathons. It was these organizations, like these pro bono agencies just took in volunteers, student volunteers and matched us with a client, a real life client. So that was a nice real world experience to have. And I just kept searching for opportunities like this to really build up that that knowledge that I would need. Other things that kind of helps me along the way I think was just networking. It was definitely something that really helped in my job hunting journey. And I think helped uh, push me closer to like success. The referrals that I did get, I'd like to think, I think, I don't know how it happens in the background, (laughs) but like, I think it helped me a bit. What were some of the things that you did or to actually network? Like what were some of the tools you use, for example? Yeah, there's a few. First, I want to go over ADP list because I will never stop. Okay promoting ADP List. ADP List is this mentorship platform that seeks to democratize mentorship for all. And it's super, super easy to use and connect with designers. Previously to like ADP List or without ADP List, I'd have to, you know, send someone on LinkedIn a connection request with a note and then I have to wait for them to accept. And then I have to like write another message once they accept. Okay, let's set something up and they have to reply. And it's like, a lot of scheduling after that. ADP List takes care of all that for people. And I think it's really good. And it is very uh, focused on designers. So I think that's a really good resource and something I've used. I've also, of course, used Lin- LinkedIn quite intensely. Yeah, LinkedIn's um, great <laughs> for that. Yeah. So just like any designer that comes up on my feed that I think is interesting, I would just reach out to them pretty blindly. And I reached out to specifically people who have come from non-traditional design backgrounds so I could get um, that perspective. And then another kind of thing I do if I really want to stand out and I really want to make a good impression, I would actually create a video for them. Just really quick wow. video, uh, video message. And that has produced some pretty cool results just because it's a lot more personal and especially like with COVID, everything is just through messages now. Having that, like (laughs) seeing a face in a video message directed to you is like a lot more impactful. That's very unique. And I think it's such a clever way to actually get folks to know you because it's really hard to get that through something that's written or or a resume because that might not be the tone in which you would, you know, interact with someone. It's such a great personable way to meet someone without actually physically meeting them. I use Vidyard Video. It's a oh, Chrome okay. extension. 
Yeah. You're sharing a lot of great resources right now so far. I think you've mentioned a bunch, so I'll make sure to go through this again and uh, link those for folks to have a reference to. Yeah. So tell me about how you landed your very first internship. How did that happen? Very first internship. Okay. So that was a startup in Toronto and it was during a time when COVID was still pretty, pretty bad. And a lot of companies were hiring and I was struggling a lot with getting anything because I was still pretty early in my design career. I had a portfolio, but it wasn't you know, too great. I only had two projects on it and none of my traditional applications were working with any companies. I pivoted my strategy to networking with startups specifically, even if they weren't hiring, I was just networking to see if they needed any UX help Mm -hmm. at all. And so I did a bunch of reach outs like that. Wasn't too successful that way either, but I did get lucky in the sense that I already had a connection at this startup because of my club experience and I was able to leverage that connection and when I I, so I reached out asking if they needed any design help they didn't have a designer before much less like a design intern it was like a shot in the dark but they're like yeah let's hop on a call and let's talk about it and so like I hopped on a call and they're like yeah you seem cool let's you know do a more formal interview and I did that interview didn't really ask much about my like design skills at all because they didn't know much about right. like having a designer on the team. So it was just very like standard interview. And then after that, I got the offer. Initially, it, it actually was a uh, marketing internship. And I was like, can I maybe not have like too much marketing work? I think there's like a lot of opportunity in your company to improve the UX. And they're like, oh yeah, like no problem. I was able to get like the title of UX intern and a lot of my responsibilities had to do with like UX and design and stuff like that, which was really a good opportunity for me. I will say though, the role, it was really like self-crafted, if that makes sense. Like I had to really, you know, make the role what I wanted it to be. So uh, I did what I could to like make the most out of my my time there. And yeah, I was able to learn a lot from it and get a portfolio project as well. And it was nice. That's an incredible story, Justine. And I think this just goes to show like how resilient you are as a designer and the determination you had. And I think this is really what it takes, especially now. And I think moving forward, this is what it takes to make sure you get what you want. And I I think you didn't even stop there. You sought to find out your focus and what you wanted to do, like even after they gave you a marketing role. Again, shows like initiative. And I think since then, you've also interned at SurveyMonkey and most recently you've interned at Shopify, right? Yes, yes, that is correct. I know last year, I think when you were starting to apply for internships again, we spoke, I think, before you were planning to apply for Shopify. And I remember you telling me specifically how terrified you were of applying (laughs) and you're scared that you weren't going to get it. Tell me what helped you get over that fear and what encouraged you to end up applying to Shopify? Yeah, for context, Shopify has been like my dream company since I was in first year. It's actually like what kind of introduced me to the world of design. I remember very distinctly like in, in first year, I went on like a office tour to Shopify and I was like, whoa, this is so cool. This is like the tech world. Um, and I got back home and I was like, looking up internship opportunities and I saw digital design intern when I was looking into it I was like oh this is really cool but I'm you know not qualified for this I was always thinking about applying and I had that tab open on my laptop for like weeks (laughs) and I was like I had a document started for what my project would be for as part of my application I had a little bit started and I was like I won't get it I, I don't know what I'm doing this is I have like school to worry about and so I ended up not applying and so then I went after that I forgot about Shopify I didn't really think about applying because I was thinking about going to marketing at the time but then I got into design again and I was like oh this is what I was thinking of applying to like years ago I saw that they were uh hiring and I was like I have to I've done all the work I've transitioned into UX I've had an internship I remember the day I I saw that applications were open. I just, I was just in shock (laughs) and I was just like paralyzed with, with fear. And I was already thinking, okay, I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to get it. But I've just, I've learned to practice, you know, not listening to that voice too much. During this time, I did a ton of 
journaling and I even started doing like video journals too because I couldn't write fast enough for like yeah. <laughs> what I wanted to say. So I did a lot of video journals like throughout my journey up until getting the internship and that just really helped calm me down and listen to myself again like all the negative thoughts just saying to myself to my past self chill out <laughs> it got a bit better because I was like I guess I was getting results but I also think I I was able to more appreciate like the smaller wins so even if like I reached out to Pavi reaching out to her and if I got a reply like that's a win that's a win and as small as it is it's a win and I got to speak with her and I got to learn about or get advice from her I reached out to the recruiter I got a reply that's a win uh, so just celebrating these like small wins also really helped in keeping me sane and not too depressed I think it's great like the way you found ways to cope with that stress. I can imagine how difficult it, it is to put yourself out there because that's what you're doing. Like every time you apply to a job or you apply anywhere, you are putting yourself out there. And I, I think that attitude change that you had and that perspective switch of, okay, these are like the small wins of, oh, I got a response. I, I think that really helps keep you going. And I, I think you figure that out, which is incredible. So now that you got like the internship, how have you found, and you can talk about this in, in general, how have you found navigating those internships and what kind of things have you learned? Yeah, um, I really loved working much more than school. I had a really good time, like just being in a real design team and being in like cool organizations and companies that do cool things. I think one thing like I learned that was like really helpful for me as I was like getting into the workforce was just being like morbidly curious, almost like annoyingly curious is like a really good thing and a really good trait to have, especially being so early in your career. It's definitely something I trained myself to think and to act. When I was going into a different company, I just asked all the questions. because There's a lot you don't know. And I have the opportunity to work with such talented and smart people in these cool companies that have a lot more experience than me, have a lot more context than me. And so I was just trying to be a sponge. And it was also just taught me to like question everything, not the way that you're presented or the way that things have been done in that company are always the right way. You know, us as students, I, I think we can bring a really fresh perspective and that can inform new ways of doing things and that you can bring that to the table instead of just taking everything as it is. Being able to work on like projects in the real world was just so fascinating to me. I remember the first time at Shopify when I proposed a small UI change to something and that was actually implemented it was like the smallest thing it was just mm -hmm. expanding the width of a button um it was just part of a project that I was doing and I saw that go live I stared at it for five minutes it was just like oh my god like I I did that and like yeah millions of merchants are gonna see that and it was just a surreal experience and I just I really enjoyed Joy working. I think you really summarized that well. You got the opportunity to work in the field as you were studying when we were talking about looking beyond what's next after Shopify. And I think we discussed how it's part of your journey. And no matter what your past experiences at your first two internships, this is all going to contribute to your growth and where you're going to go next. And mm -hmm. I think it's going to help you stand out. You've worked at such fantastic companies, of course, like through your hard work. And I wanted to chat about that a little bit, too, because you were offered an extension of your internship, right? Like towards the end of, of last year, if you're able to articulate that. What were some of the things that you, you did to help you get that? Yeah, so when you get into uh, an internship program at like a bit of like a larger tech company, I think... There's always that thought in interns' minds, okay, how do I secure that like full-time role? It's you know really scary and it's something people think about on like their very first day. And some advice that I got from Pavi actually was, you know, don't think about it. It's gonna stress you out. And it definitely did stress me out at the beginning, but then I took Pavi's advice and I just try not to think about it too much. And I really since I was, you know, so grateful to like be at Shopify, I just really wanted to make the most out of my time here, whether it was just for four months or for more. Uh, and I just try not to think about it that much. 
which I think really helped me in the long run and focus on what's important, which was like my projects instead of impressing my manager. I just really wanted to make impact and do the best that I can and learn as much as I can. Uh, and then two is what I was talking about before is just being curious. I also heard or in my impact view, there was also mentioned that like some of my peers have also said that I am like really curious and they like appreciated that and they admired that about me. Shopify evaluates interns what and on whether to become full-time or not is like making impact and at first making impact seems like very how much did you contribute mm-hmm. to the revenue or something um and that concerned me a bit because I didn't know if I was able to make such a large impact on like the company but I don't think any intern is really expected to like do something huge to propel the company and at the beginning especially I didn't I barely got to work on my project I was just doing a lot of training and like gathering context and stuff like that so I was very concerned about if I was making impact at all because I was just like learning um but one way I was able to make impact was like getting involved in other parts of the company so I joined like the Asian ERG to help out with the newsletter I did like an audit of Mm -hmm. the product area that we were working on and that's another way of like creating impact on like the company and on the people and so that was a shift in perspective on what I thought of impact and also just showing that I can work independently was also something that my lead told me was like really good because what they want to see in interns is like oh you can be independent you can make Mm -hmm. decisions by yourself And, and yeah Yeah. And I think the one thing I I found you constantly mentioning was like learning, right? And I think learning and that curiosity that you had and that you just went with, I I think had like really helped you Uh, because it it can be really hard when you have this perspective of putting all your eggs in like this one basket and this final goal of, okay, my goal is to get like this final internship or get the promotion. It can get really hard because then it just becomes about, you know, that one target and you're not thinking about all the other things that you want to explore and do along the way in your journey. Yeah. So I, yeah. I think you took it in that perspective, which I think made magic for you. I wanted to end things off with if there's one piece of advice you want to give to folks to walk out with, what would that be? Mm-hmm. Okay. If like last year, if you're talking to like last year me, I would have said something like, don't wait for motivation to hit, develop self-discipline to achieve your goals and like grind and stuff like that. But I like severely burned out at the end of last year. And so now I think one piece of advice that I'd want to share is just to like be gentle with yourself, careers and like getting a job is just super, super stressful and can be damaging to your self-esteem and to your like lifestyle as well as it was for me like I think having you know time to yourself and taking care of yourself really nurtures your creativity and it helps you become a better you and a better you're better equipped to be um, an employee and to get that job once when you take care of yourself and it's something I had to learn the hard way it's I, I think one to really summarize it is just your volume of work doesn't equal like the impact of your work Mm -hmm. like take breaks I think it will like help the quality of your work and you know who you are and the habits that you were able to like create for yourself and I think that's a lot more sustainable than like just grinding and like hustling 24 7 yeah I love that reflection of like last year and tying in your experience. I think it's such a great way to end things off. So thank you so much, Justine, uh, for your time. I'm sure a lot of people are going to find this so helpful. It was really nice chatting with you. It's nice chatting with you too.